This movie goes over some of the basic film terms covered in the book. Chapters through 2 through 4. The main uh, purpose of chapter 2 is looking at the frame and each single photo of frame and how it can be analyzed. This is called mise en scene, which is a French term for everything that the director has control of. You can see the actors, the sets, the props, um, and then you can look at the kinds of actors, the different stars, how they put together versus an ensemble cast, such as a Robert Altman movie that we'll see. Um, they also control the sets and the shooting, shooting on location versus a set, low budget films, it's very expensive to shoot in Hollywood now. So learning about the film theory and the shots, um, how filmmakers create tension can help you understand what's going on in the film. So there's lots of variety of shots that we can use and we'll do a quick overview of what they are. They can vary in duration. You can have quick editing like in Psycho in the shower scene. That's very quick editing. Or it could be very slow like a John Ford Western. But some basic shots um, that you need to know are the long shot where you can see a landscape, a building, or a crowd. A medium shot, uh, classical editing would start with a long shot, then a medium shot, and then go to a close-up. Uh, then you have a close-up, so you can really see what the director wants you to see. It adds a lot of importance to the object. And then, of course, after the close-up, you have the extreme close-up. Other uh, shots are over the shoulder shots, sometimes where you have the back of one person and the face so you can really see the relationship between the two characters. And then the angles can also determine um, commentary on what it is that we're seeing. So some of the different angles used are a bird's eye view where the camera is extremely overhead and the viewer gets a godlike perspective of what's going on. The high angle shot, where the subject of the shot looks insignificant compared to a low angle shot, where the subject has a lot more power and height because you're looking up at them from a low angle. So the angle of the camera is very important. You also have oblique angles where the camera is tilted a little bit, so it looks like the person's falling out of the frame. Uh, also, we need to look at the point of view of where the particular character that we see. It was interesting in Pan's Labyrinth when we saw the point of view of the captain at the end. So we also have, you know, eye level camera, which is the most common. Citizen Kane was effective because they used a lot of low angle shots from the floor. Um, some typical shots, you have your establishing shot, your point of view reaction shot, angle reverse, the stunt shot, and then we also have our camera movement which is chapter 3 in your textbook. If you really want to get into detail on this, you're going to have to read the book. So I recommend it. You have all types of movement types. You have screen, freeze frames, animation, motion, dollies, pans, zooms, all different ways you can move the camera. Right, so the pan is just where the camera moves horizontally on a fixed base. The tilt is when the camera is fixed, but it goes up or down. A lot of times you'll see a shot and then all of a sudden the camera will tilt up and it'll go up to the sky. You have your tracking shot, which is where the camera moves through space, but stays in the same plane. Goodfellas is a very good dolly shot in it. And a boom shot, where the camera moves up or down through space. And the director can use these techniques to really inform the viewer with what he wants them to see. Now zoom is when the camera lens zooms in and gets closer or further from an object. Sometimes they'll be out of focus and then they'll zoom in and it'll come in focus to the other character. Okay, chapter 4 focuses on editing. There you can see a copy of the book. And editing refers to getting from scene to scene in your movie. So how does the director go from one scene to another? 
You have wipes, an optical effect in which one shot appears to push the preceding one from the screen. You don't see this too much anymore. You have an iris, which is where you use a circle or um, some other effect that will make things emerge from the frame. Now, there are basic elements that they can use, directors can use through editing to help make a creative story or a coherent story. Um, so you should ask how much cutting there is, how long are the shots, what is the point of the cut, what is the angle. Montage is a big um, theory in editing where you see similar shots like the Rocky movie and his montage of training. And that's the end. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, PowerPoint presentation.